Good morning and welcome to the Caregiver Teleconnection. My name is Glenda Rogers and I'm going to be your hostess or your facilitator for today's session. Today we have with us Dr. Jamie Heisman and he is going to be talking with us today about New Year's resolutions for caregivers and I think that's a really appropriate topic as we go into this, this 2023 year. Before he gets started, let me tell you just a little bit about Dr. Jamie. Dr. Jamie Heisman built his innovative healthcare career on the premise that necessity is the mother of invention. His belief that the resilience of the human spirit and collaboration are key to our country's health future is the core of his philosophy. He is a fierce advocate of patient-centered healthcare and a workforce in touch with their own wellness. He has almost 30 years of medical and behavioral health experience in the nonprofit and for-profit corporate leadership roles. Today, he works in provider relations and governmental affairs for WellMed Medical Management, a San Antonio, Texas-based physician-owned primary clinic organization. Welcome, Dr. Jamie. Thank you, Glenda. And thank you to everybody who has the self-awareness to actually tune in. It's you who I think is like the choir. Have you ever heard that expression, you know, preaching to the choir? You have this amazing sort of innate resilient spirit inside of you that says, I wanted to dedicate an hour to my own self-awareness. So I'm very privileged and I'm very grateful for all of you who have joined us and Glenda to the Wellman Charitable Foundation that facilitates this. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this three weeks into January and not January 1st is because, look, New Year's resolutions are wonderful. They seem to be a uh, a ritual of us in America and around the world. We think we're going to do something and change our lives. And then we create these lofty goals. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to you know, stop doing this. I'm going to be a better this. And guess what? After about three weeks, yep, we're at that timetable. We find out that about 90% <laughs> have all been dropped. And that's the reason is that caregivers will understand this most, is that there's no silver bullet. Our expectations and our resolutions are way too high. We, we really want to change so much. And literally, our emotional well-being is an incremental process. It's inch by inch. It's three steps forward and two backwards. So today, I wanted to give you a more realistic New Year's resolution for you as a caregiver's emotional well-being. Okay? I'm going to call this, hey, listen, we just had you know the Lunar New Year. And so God rest the souls of that terrible tragedy. America is the only place where somebody can get an AR-15 and has an attachment disorder and do such a thing. But the Lunar New Year is, um, is a great New Year. It's a new Chinese New Year. Um, and it's also the year of the rabbit. And that's fascinating stuff. My daughter is a rabbit. Uh, she was born 12 years ago. Why do I say all that? Well, to be frank with you, it's also the year of transformation. Every time you have a new animal, you have a new transformation, you have new qualities. And I want you as caregivers to understand that 2023 can be your year of transformation. But guess what? It's the outlook of mental health. It's the slow acceptance of mental health. It is that. And I'm not sure why you, you tuned in. I, I Obviously, you have your own personal reasons as a psychologist or a social worker. I never assume putting my head on your neck is not going to fit. So I facilitate people in their own healing journey and their own righteous path. But you did call in for a reason to spend an hour to figure out New Year's resolutions as a caregiver. And you knew the topic, right? So I'm going to give you about 15 seconds right now, because I'm a trauma therapist, so I believe in experiential interventions, to literally go inside, literally go inside yourself, and your powerful presence here came for a reason. And I would love for you to go inside and, Joe, you know, just see if you can't find the why you actually came in here, okay? Why? Now, the optimum thing would be the why would be you, right? You know me all too well. Uh, but really, that's not necessarily the realistic thing, and I deal with realistic things. So let's do this together, okay? If you will, let's close your eyes. Just put your feet on the ground. Feel the floor through your shoes. If you're barefooted, feel the floor through your feet. And let's take the next 15 seconds, that's all, when, my, when I click my fingers, to go inside and look at the why you tuned in today for the New Year's resolution talk, okay? Starting right now. Okay, come on back, open your eyes, come back to our meeting. 
listen, sometimes, and I, I really want to make the cautionary informed consent, some people didn't find the why, and that's okay. A lot of clinical reasons for that, and we can always find places to explore that with somebody. But those who did, it, it's really cool if you did. You'll, I want you to hold on to that. Because you know, too often we associate codependency and caregiving, meaning we get externally validated by other people, people, places, and things. Okay, we're doing good for mom, we're doing good for our brothers or sisters. You know, we're the hero, and and that's we're looking for the atta boys, out of girls, pat in the back. But literally, internal motivation is always better than external. It's like a river of life that runs within you and never runs dry. Um, it's your purpose. It's your mission. It's like why you tuned in here. So I'm going to ask you to hold on to why you think you tuned in to find out about New Year's resolution. I, I'm hoping against hope, and I'm going to say the common denominator, it's to relieve your stress because there's nothing like caregiving to drive stress. We have, what, 45 million taking care of our seniors, another 40 million taking care of our special needs kids. So one third of our country is taking care of somebody. But let's say it's stress. So that baby, um, it's not so much a baby anymore on my back there is when I'm feeling depressed or anxious or overwhelmed, and gosh, I'm just a human being, y'all. I'm no Buddha just because I'm a therapist. I have to go see my therapist every week as well. But when I'm feeling that way, that's my why. I literally wake up uh, because I'm an ARP daddy of an 11-year-old child. It was God's curveball. But I'd love it to be me. She's my lily pad to me. She's teaching me about me. But I don't know what your why is, but hold on to it. I will say if it is stress, and I'm hoping against hope that's the common denominator that you want to relieve your stress, that you look to the WellMed Charitable Foundation in this series to do that. I will say this, when you embrace stress, and that means leaning into stress, you can transform fear into courage, isolation into connection, and suffering into meaning. Uh, Kelly McGonigal is excellent in talking about embracing stress, but so was Carl Jung. When Carl Jung says when we embrace our shadow, we start getting well. Okay, so understand that there's no really way around stress that for caregivers, especially that we have to feel our body, we have to feel the dysregulation, we have to feel the stress and then act on it. And I'm going to show you emotional regulation techniques like you always know I do at the end with uh, breath work, because the key to stress is that emotional self-regulation and hanging around healthy people, non-toxic people, people that meet you halfway, right? So here's the theme right now of this talk. I'm going to give you some very realistic ways to approach New Year's resolutions and mental health, not as lofty, ones I know you can achieve, but keep calm and just simply embrace your stress this year. And as you're listening to me, embrace, if you will, and be open to some of the solutions. They're not as difficult as you think. They're not going to require you to come see me every week. They're going to allow you to become that person. So here's the truth about resolutions. We all think it's up here in our head. Like reading a self-help book, we think we're going to get better. Well, I used to treat addicts and alcoholics daily who were smarter than I was in addiction work. And I am ran treatment centers and I'm certified in addiction care, but they would still go out and relapse the next day. Okay. They knew it all, but they didn't feel it all. And so if you started making resolutions, don't worry, you're in safe company. Really about 40% of Americans actually said it. Really, that number is really low, about 90%, 90% by the first month dropped them or realized that they were too lofty. But we all want to make positive, impactful changes in our life, right? But let's be realistic about it. And that's what I want to do today. Being realistic is also being, we retrain our brains, that, that therapy and psychology in the world of psychoanalytic world, I am Freudian, I mean, I'm, I'm a Jungian trained uh, therapist, but, you know, Freud was the beginning guy. We loved him. He kicked it off. And about 50% of what he said was true. And I do honor him. But in the 1980s, we started realizing, and this is beautiful for caregiving especially, and for the foundation, and I'm very privileged to be invited as an advisory board member of the Complex PTSD Foundation, is that the brain is really the key to our stress reduction. It's not coming and seeing me necessarily and asking what happened to you and you know, your dad when you're 10 years old. That can create emotional flashbacks, right? No, it, it's, your brain is the key. So when we're looking at goals, I want you to be brain-centered, number one, and I'm going to explain that thought because I'm a neuro-informed trauma therapist, but when setting resolutions, I want you to really reflect, okay, on the realistic change, which is the three steps forward and two back. So I want you to look around yourself, you know, your family, your loved one you're taking care of, you know, your whole ecosystem, and understand that 
we're going to get there, but by taking smaller, more achievable steps toward the goal, there's a whole lot better chance you're going to keep them. Listen, I always loved the story of the tortoise and the hare, and all my life, in my codependent way, I was always the hare. But really, it isn't. Remember, slow and steady wins this race. For caregiving, it is slow and steady. And the East, years ago, a thousand years, Lao Tzu said it best, that this journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So today, I'm going to provide you that lily pad, that single step. You all heard about personal coaching, right? You see football, you know, we're in the middle of football playoff season, coaching, that's when you see them yelling plays in. Well, what coaching really is, is kind of keeping a promise to yourself. So I'm going to try to get you as a caregiver to be your own personal coach, right? I mean, I would love for you to keep the promise to yourself. When we do keep promises to ourselves as caregivers, it builds up our self-esteem psychologically. So why is that important? Well, the higher your self-esteem, the lower your guilt as a caregiver. That's a psychological truism. If you have a lot of guilt, your self-esteem is now the thing that we need to look at. To lower guilt, you have to start doing things for yourself, emotional self-regulation, Pilates, yoga, meditation, go to a meeting, um, go to support groups. All that is really uh, something that's going to alleviate guilt and raise self-esteem. So as a caregiver, this is all about 2023 stress reduction. And as we actually act on our own stress, and believe me, nobody else is going to know when you're stressed, right? Nobody. I mean, I cannot tell you, you know, calm down, right? When somebody says that, that's like uh, Nancy Reagan telling an addict, just say no. You know, I can't tell you that. Only you feel stress. You know stress inside of you. So you're the only person who can be in touch with your body. And I do breath work. You'll see that the body is really needs to be that which tells us, okay? But stress reduction, okay, as that accrues, as you start looking at it, you're going to be raising resilience, you resilience slowly. Resilience is the ability to resist or bounce back from adversity and not break. So at WellMed, we have the emotional support response team. Everybody asks what we do. I said, you know, we just stress reduction. But in doing so, the byproduct is we build resilience in our employees, hopefully our patients, and now you, our caregivers. Because literally, stress reduction builds that. So when you're in crises as a caregiver, and how often that happens, there's something in your bank account, Right. And the bank account is, happens because you've already been on the path of your own stress reduction. If you got a loved one, she or he's torturing you, and believe me, I'll do that high conflict caregiving because that can happen often with or without a personality disorder. But you have to understand, you have to say, give me 90 seconds, 80 seconds, I'm going to do breath work. You have to really excuse yourself in the middle because stress reduction will build your resilience. It truly does. And that should be what we talk about today, transformatively in 2023, because whenever you convert stress, it builds the bank account. Just like the bank, when I go into pay my rent and it's not there, it's like you, it's caregivers. If it's not there and you've got crises and your loved one is torturing you or something terrible happens or a loss occurs or your family screaming at you, you're going to have to go draw from that resilience bank account. Guess what? The deposits is stress reduction. Okay. And self-aware of stress reduction, meaning feel your body. I'm going to show you at the end how to do this. Believe what you see. Believe what you feel. Don't believe what you hear. But I want you to become self-aware. Self-aware allows us, like Dr. Miguel Ruiz says, to pull back and watch ourselves. Not to be in the middle of the drama, but to watch the drama. So outside of work, when I talk to our employees, you know, they've got all of these things going on in their life. Well, I tell them, guess what? Caregivers are going through all this all the time, parallel, even if they're working, right? You've got career changes, technological changes, your personality, you've got people, long distance caregivers telling you what to do. You know, you're frustrated, life changes. Okay, these are outside of work. You all know it better than they do. But caregiving itself is a huge trigger for this. And that's why this is such an important time for me to talk about the continuum. Okay, I am a compassion fatigue therapist. So when I came to WellMed, it was to deal with the burnout, as Linda said, of our doctors. But we always talk about burnout and stress and compassion fatigue interchangeably. But clinically, let me tell you what, it is not interchangeable. Stress is the gateway to burnout. And burnout is the gateway to vicarious traumatization, which is compassion fatigue. So literally, these are three, this like uh, learning disabilities, cancer, anything you want. This is on the, you can have stage one, you can have stage four. Stress, 
okay, is the gateway. It's the window. That's why today in 2023, I want you to understand stress reduction. I want you to understand the incredible meaning it has on your body, your medical care, and literally on the burnout. And caregiver burnout is what we're all dealing with. So if you actually can feel your body when you're dysregulated, deal with stress, you can probably prevent burnout. I'll tell you what, stress is pretty much what you're feeling now, what you're feeling today. We all have a healthy amount of stress and sometimes that triggers us to do things. You know, I'd I I'd hope it tr triggers you to immediately go inside and emotionally regulate. But stress is when you put too much effort in. Somebody's not meeting you halfway. Stress is when you feel emotions more strongly, okay? So you, you're moderate, you don't have moderation. It's called emotional, uh, it's EQ, emotional intelligence. Um, but stress is when you feel very hyperactive and anxious. You know, something dysregulates you. You have a lot less energy. And it does take a physical toll. The body keeps the score. So burnout, on the other hand, is a little bit more different. If you don't do the stress reduction as a caregiver, burnout is a de detachment of self and soul. I mean, it means everything is hard to put in the effort. It means that the energy vampire has sucked the energy out. It means you're more as an automaton and your emotions are blunted or you do feel drained and helpless, okay? You have a lot less motivation. And guess what? Even vacations, if you're working, you'll find out are not restorative. That's burnout. You're with me, right? So stress is the window. Burnout is the house. But at the end of the day, compassion fatigue, which I will touch on later, is the unfortunate, unfortunate final spot for this, which is our actual childhood traumas, those unresolved issues in our life start being triggered one after the other. And we start really going down the, the hell hole of shame. So I want you to remember, uh, you all know when I wrote this book in 2006 that we had a hard time finding the name of it. Lisa and I and Dr. Laird were looking for it. And I was you know, in the throes of my own codependency as a hero child, but I remember getting on that plane in LA and the stewardess coming out and when she said this same thing, okay, place the oxygen max on yourself, I felt weird. I said, no, I'm going to give it to my, yeah, at that time I didn't have a kid, but I was going to give it to my, my grandma, my mom, my, my wife, whatever, but I'm not giving it to myself first. But it intrigued me so much that literally we were looking for a title. And I said, well, this sounds cool, but I got to understand it. So I called the Federal Aviation Association and they said, look, sometimes you do live and you've got 19 seconds of useful consciousness. And if you haven't taken the oxygen first, it is guaranteed that both of you die. And so for 2023, I do want this to be your mantra. I want you to get, you know, I do want you to get stick up notes. I want you to put them everywhere you go. Because when you take your oxygen first, it means it's a path to stress reduction. It means that while somebody's yelling, screaming, or needy, or disrespecting, or discounting you, and that happens a lot inadvertently, inadvertently with caregiving, except for those people who are diagnosed with personality disorder, and they really will go to town. But understand when that's happening, you have to be able to say, I'm feeling dysregulated, okay? And deal with things holistically, physically, emotionally, mentally. Make sure you're with some healthy people. Have a very good friend that you can connect with. And, and, and spiritual means uh, have a higher power piece, give back, do something. All of this is that 2023, which may be the year of the rabbit, for you as caregivers, it has to be the year of stress reduction. Otherwise, you'll end up in this terrible spot which I do my deal with cops and firemen is compassion fatigue. And that really is a harder place to get out of. It really is. So I'm trying to prevent you all from hitting burnout, but if you are burned out, it's natural. Caregiving is somewhat burnout if you're not taking care of your mind, body, spirit, but please, there is a way not to enter vicarious traumatization or secondary traumatic stress. And that is incredibly important to take care of 2023 because you know, as caregivers, we tell ourselves everything. We can do anything with our mind, right? We can deny, we can distract, we can project, we can say we're okay, we can handle it, but the body will always keep the score. And I'd love for you to look at the book by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. He's a phenomenal trauma-informed psychiatrist. Uh, I am very fortunate to sit on the uh, advisory board with him at the Polyvagal Institute, but the body will always keep the score. And this is really the premise of complex post-traumatic stress disorder. So when I put in that CPTSD foundation in the chat room, I want you all to take that down because they're opening up a powerful program for family members. And you'll learn so much about the roots of codependency and the roots of us as caregivers because the body will keep the score. 
literally, you can tell yourself anything, distract, but when your headache comes, it comes. When the inflammation in your body happens, it happens. When the cortisol gets secreted, it's going to get secreted. When your adrenals and your kidneys are going wild, it's going to happen. Your heart rate, you name it. You can't stop that. I don't care what you tell yourself. That's why it's important to integrate your mind and body as caregivers. So the key, now I'm going to get to your resolutions in a minute here, but the key and the premise is stop reading solutions and start doing them. Experiential intervention is the only thing that work. Okay, taking yourself from your head to your heart. The longest journey you ever make is that journey from your head to your heart. That means anything, guys. That means if you, if you like crocheting, if you like walking, if you like Pilates, if you like yoga, um, you know, I'm show you breath work, you got gratitude journaling. These are all experiential solutions to take you from your head to your heart. They are also important because they rewire the brain. So in 2023, I want you to become aware that you can be your own trauma therapist. And once you're aware of this, you have to do something about it. The Freud called the cognitive dissonance. So now that you're aware that literally your brain and default to fight, flight, fear and fawning, which is codependency as caregivers, you can get out of it. Obviously, it takes a lot. You know, it took Arnold Schwarzenegger a while to look like that, right? It's a personal coaching process. It's like having a river flow over a rock and polishing it. But this is the beauty of small incremental steps. I want you to really go slow. But once you're aware, I'd like you to start looking at transformation. So after today, I'd like you to start knowing yourself because it's the beginning of all wisdom. And if you feel stressed, there's ways to get away from 50 seconds or 80 seconds, and breath work, things you can do um, to self-regulate. But see, once you're aware, you have to transform. Now, your loved one that you take care of, your family, they may not understand your transformation because they're all stuck in their dysfunctional sort of relationship and they don't want you to. That's okay. Transform anyway. It's not their journey to understand. It's your journey. It's your story. And so once you're aware, and I'm going to ask you in 2023, the transformation is to look at yourself in a different way. That you look at yourself that literally as you care give, you can find self-love. Okay, taking your oxygen first is finding self-love. Know yourself, love yourself, trust yourself, and be yourself. Look, enlightenment, being on the mountain in Tibet, sitting there and looking at these spiritual wonders is not the goal. No, the, you've heard me. I've done presentations on this. If you go see the teleconnection, you'll look at mine on authenticity. The goal is to be honest in the moment. It's to take off the mask. It's not to be that Halloween costume of the hero child. You know, it's to be able to be honest with the person in front of you. You have to be, even a loved one you're taking care of. Now, honor the fact that your loved one has to meet you halfway. It's not going to work if your loved one doesn't meet you halfway. So now you're asking, oh, doctor, they've got Alzheimer's, they have Parkinson's. They can't meet me halfway. No, everybody, no matter what limitations they have, have the ability to meet you halfway in something. So don't create learned helplessness in others, Okay. Be with them and understand they need somebody to go halfway. Now, one of the things I'm looking at in our book, of course, and I was mentioning this to Glenda, is we're using rock and roll as an experiential sort of thing. Many people can relate to toxic relationships that way. So with my daughter, um, this is a song that I care about. Nothing else matters. For caregivers, nothing else matters me. That if you know who you are as a caregiver, mind, body, spirit, you take care of your stress. You're not listening to the gaslighting BS of the world around you. You know who you are. Taking your oxygen first. Guess what? Nothing else matters. You'll never take anything personally. You'll know you're doing your best. And that's it. But it's all about you. So in 2023, I need you to start understanding the realization that we never see things as they are. We see them as we are. Okay? That means if you're anxious, overwhelmed, depressed, you're going to see something and it's going to be through anxious, overwhelmed, and depressed filters. So if you emotionally regulate, like do breath work or chill or calm your nervous system, you then will see it differently. I'm going to ask you to start teaching your loved one also breath work or also emotional regulation techniques because they're also seeing things differently. So when my daughter and I have conversations and she gets really elevated, and kids do, and authentically, she should cry. That's what kids do. I also ask her to do breath work so she and I can then revisit and talk together to reset our neurosystems because we never see things as they are. We see them as we are. What I'm asking you is look at 2023 as the year of bouncing back. Okay. 
we are all facing challenges, disappointments, defeats, you know, um, suffering um, is, is everywhere. So the Buddha said, but I often said the pain is inevitable. Suffering is not. Okay. We don't have to wallow in it. We can start adapting. And the ad adaptation is how do we feel our dysregulation, our bodies and our stress? But we have to lean in. You have to go, unfortunately, through the worst to get to the best. You can't put it under the carpet. You'll be walking on lumpy carpets. So it's important to understand that we got into this issue of our brain and how we default in caregiving to the hero child, to the lost child. We may be taking care of a mom who wasn't that nice or we didn't get along with as a child. And we may end up doing this thing. Everything are triggers. That's what complex PTSD is about. It's about the adverse childhood experiences. So our mental health is in our hands, our brain, the way we think. When people ask me about what are you doing at WellMed with our 30,000 employees, I said, I'm getting them in touch with their childhoods. Why is that? I said, because we're doomed to recreate our dramas and traumas until we intervene on it. And we come out of our childhood with a fight, flight, freeze response. Those are biological or the fawning response, and that's codependency. So understand, 2023, if you start looking at things, and I'm going to give you the resolutions this way, you start opening your mind up in a way to that everything is a learning experience. Everything's challenging, okay? But it's a challenge, it's a gift. I want you to start understanding, and this is the premise of this time I have with you right now, that mental health is housed in your body, your brain, and your neurological system. It's not housed in that lady or man across from you taking care of. It's not housed in that discounting long distance caregiver in Washington that's telling you how to do things when you know how to do things. It's not in other people, it's within you, okay? And I'm gonna get you in touch with that. You're going to have to start reparenting yourself. We got into this, unfortunately, because of parenting. I don't think our parents were nefarious. Some of them, you know, had personality issues. But the only way out of this is also healthy relationships. And we have to start putting the ring on our finger. Taking our oxygen first means that if you're in the middle of a fight or an argument or dysregulation with your loved one, okay, you may have to say no. You may have to draw boundaries, Okay. You, you may have to go and take a walk around the block. You may have to call a friend of yours and go to a, do a, a lesson, creating a daily ritual for a few minutes. You know, these things of how to reparent yourself is being fair, consistent, and available for yourself. That's the definition of parenting, not just saying the word love. God knows I've been in enough courtrooms testifying people who said they loved and they were up for felonies. Reparenting ourselves and getting in touch with this concept in 2023 means us being fair, consistent, and available with ourselves, which allows us then to forgive ourselves and allows us to find compassion. So if it's all in our hands, the stress reduction, the first step is to regulate our emotions. Now, the beauty of all of you checking in here is you already get it, okay? You regulate your emotions by really strengthening your awareness skills. That is really how we get calm or stress. Okay, when you practice a daily emotional fitness program, you'll get calm. You'll start really regulating your emotions. When you develop a support system, I don't know where that comes from, but believe it could come from your neighborhood, it could come from church, temple, synagogue, ashram. It could happen in AA or NA, but I wanna make sure you're choosing people that meet you halfway because we can only heal through relationships that are healthy. Right? We can only reduce our stress where people honor us and have compassion. Okay, I want you to start looking at developing a philosophy of self-acceptance. Don't keep pushing yourself away and go into that shame spiral. And only control what you can. That's your response. Remember, grant me the serenity, accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and the wisdom of the difference. And then give back. Regulate your emotions by getting out and living a meaningful life, paying it forward. So reparenting ourselves means you care about your neurosystem. Listen, I, I had my first child in my 50s. And all I can tell you is they said, how do you parent? And I wanted to refund all my patients their money back. Because when I learned, and thank heavens, I, I'm learning with some great, great people in, at the Polyvagal Institute and Complex Big TSD Foundation, is I have to raise my child to feel neurologically safe. So she has to understand herself, her fight, flight, fear. I have to understand mine. And we enter these discussions realizing that we have to create safe space. Yelling doesn't create safe space. Timeouts don't create safe space. We have to do that. So a healthy, supportive person
person, is one that's supportive of you, stands behind you, encourages you to grow. Unhealthy people, they'll tell you what to dress like. They fight your battles for you. They manipulate you. Um, they're much fixed mindset. So I want you to start seeking your family of choice. Now, it's not necessarily your biological family. As a therapist, that's what I got into is help people with their biological families and those I should say narcissistic injuries or adverse childhood experiences that they had to go through. No, family's not always blood. In fact, this group right now has a shared humanity. This group, now you can start putting chat rooms if you want, you can put numbers and text each other if you want it. You can say that you have each other's back. I mean, this group is its own really family. And family's not always the blood, it's the people in your life who want you in theirs. Okay, everybody on this call, for some reason, is in theirs for a reason. The ones who do accept you for who you are. They don't try to change you. The ones who would do anything to see you smile, but who love you no matter what. Start doing the inventory. Start looking at that. And when you hang around these people in 2023, you'll start seeing your energy will come back. Look, a friend will allow you to lay out boundaries. Daring to set boundaries is about having the courage to love yourself. I want you to go really, again, I always tell you this, okay, and I'm, she's on YouTube. She's very open and vulnerable. Dr. Brene Brown is fabulous, and she'll help you with that greatly, okay? Because Darren has set boundaries about having the courage to love ourselves, even when we risk disappointing others. Look, the other person is not your problem. They're an adult. The child is. Their adult is not. They need to go call their own therapist. They need to go find their own group. Why it bothers them? You are not responsible. You're responsible for being honest, compassionate, straightforward, authentic. They're responsible for dealing with that, okay? You cannot be responsible for other people. So you're waiting all this time for this before we get to breath work, and I'm going to give it to you. This is a small incremental resolutions I want you to think about. Forget what you did, and maybe they're working, and you shouldn't forget it and keep working. on it. But here's the easy, slow way as a caregiver to look at a real different paradigm for yourself in 2023. Make a time for fun and interesting self-care. My daughter's teaching me that play, the humor, these are all neurosystem combers, right? I want you to, after you get done today, go brainstorm a list of cool things you like. Look, it doesn't mean running a five mile race. It might mean just walking. It might mean going and having tea with your friends. But these things, I want you to schedule them in your daily routine, one or two. You don't do it every day. And if you don't do it, don't be disappointed. You're just a human being. Get back and do it. When I have addicts slip, I always say the slip was important. It's not a major relapse that you learn from. Okay. Now I'll give, you know, I'll help you find a good therapist. I think a good therapist is good or a transformative coach or somebody in geriatric care world is great because it allows us a safe place. But daily exercise, just walking a little bit, doing that, incorporate that, make time, calm your nervous system down. Humor can do this. Laughing can do it. Play. Learn through a child. Sometimes I need to remind myself that taking time for me is not selfish, but necessary. So resolution one, take a look at that schedule. Just so start putting a five minutes in for a day or two a week, seeing how you feel. If you're dysregulated, take 80 seconds. If that person across the you can't give you 80 seconds, you do need to call in the Calvary. Resolution two. Wow. Be kind to yourself. That is the parenting. We never really got that as a child. We kind of were at the mission of our, our, like a POW, the people around us. My parents fought like cats and dogs. I had no idea how to be kind to myself. I was always thinking that they were the ones who had to be, but they didn't know how to be kind to themselves. But I want you to start having this as the mantra. You know, the change can be hard and often takes time. But if you allow yourself feelings and forgive yourself, that's a kindness exercise. Or what we do, compassionate later, we do breath work. That's a kindness. You're doing what's best in the moment. So the attitude of unconditional self-acceptance is probably the most important variable in long-term recovery. That's the reparenting. We never really, our parents kind of, unfortunately, we got a lot of shame and stigma and a lot of put in corners. No, the attitude of unconditional self-acceptance is you reparenting yourself in long-term care unconditionally. Okay. Guess what, guys? I'm taking you a little bit out of the mind, but don't forget the mind and the body are connected. So resolution three, please find some restorative sleep. You know, I have a hard time with that. And the Complex PTSD Foundation, you know, we all know trauma comes to us in our sleep. 
Uh, my own does too. I'm with my therapist every week. But try to make restorative sleep a priority, okay? Sleep and mental health are interrelated. Um, really, they are. When I do four, seven, eight at the end, which is the breath work, Dr. Wild created that for sleep. So it's important for you to restore yourself and your soul, okay? You know you feel a lot better and you will heal and grow in your brain, which we as caregivers have cognitive fog. Sleep helps us to be better for ourselves, to care more for ourselves, okay? Remember, caregiving can be an energy vampire. Sleep will restore the energy. Resolution four, listen, it's about human connectedness. I know I'm old enough to realize the day when there was no social media. I remember on TV, a, a kid, I was speaking to the, the producer of Geraldo not long ago. He contacted me on LinkedIn and I said, Marty, yeah, it was early 2000. I'm sorry, it was 1992 when I started with Geraldo. I said, Marty, we had 6 million viewers watching Geraldo. That was in 1992. And he said, yeah, now you're lucky to get 600,000. Why is that? Listen, content is coming from everywhere. Okay. Unfortunately, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have social media, we have Snapchat, we have TikTok. Listen, we have television. Resolution four, slowly be kind to yourself. Don't put lofty goals. Start limiting your screen time. Spending too much time on your phone, TV, or computer, it does impact a lot. First of all, you have this narcissistic world out there trying to look good. You're trying to measure yourself up when you're in the throes of caregiving. Okay, you have your relationships, you know, are, are not that which you read. People like to create images. That's what the, our foundation, the TAR Network is about, is image making. Be conscious how much time you're spending online. Be conscious how much you're watching TV and start using that time to do exactly this. Go to a support group. I know in Texas, you have fabulous caregiver SOSs. It's the Lisa Gibbons Foundation support groups were everything. It meant the power of human connection. And if you can't do that, call a good friend, nurture people that are, meet you halfway. Less than the social media, less than the screen time for 2023, and interchange it more with the power of human connection. There is no substitute for that. There really isn't. Um, and we need to get back to it. We need to get back, okay? Makes sense, right? It's not that tough. Just try it. You'll like it. And finally, call on us, meaning us, I'm saying the caregiver teleconnection. You know, we are the emotional support response team here, but the teleconnection, we have a lot that can nurture you. Um, I'd love to think that you're also going to find a good trauma therapist, a complex PTSD therapist um, that can be there for you and give you a safe spot. But it's all about self-awareness. So in 2023, I need you to learn and accept more about your mental health. We've detached the mental health from the medical health, and we've done a terrible disservice in this country. I need for caregivers to lead the way, to, okay, to learn and accept more. Understand, identify, respond to signs and symptoms. Learn about this, okay? You can always get ESRT. We're doing our patient out outreach now in 2023. We're going to do our caregiver. But understand, the more you learn about mental health and how connected it is to your medical health, you will set an example for our doctors, our world. So really, all that I'm asking you to do is to emotionally regulate and be around healthy people. And that's what will create a proactive person, a self-aware person. And in 2023, I have to say self-awareness has to be the key to caregiving. All right? So is that so tough? Is that really tough? Really quickly? Really? I mean, these are the resolutions that's going to help you a lot as a caregiver. Find fun time. Go to a, a, a comedy club. Go out and play. Look at a child. The child will totally show you when they have a belly laugh, their whole nervous system calms down. Get some humor into your life. You know, these are ways that are fun and interesting. Find the things that you like. As I mentioned to you, I have a person who answers the phone at well, I'm in Dallas. And she said, Jamie, I only like self crocheting. So she's crocheting now as she listens to patients who call. I want you to look at your self care activity. That's all. I want you to schedule the be kind to yourself moments. I want you to do that. That's just the breath work I'm going to show you. I want you to schedule it, but I also want you to use it really willingly. Humans are the only th people that can reset their system. I'd like for you to start, and there's a lot of places online, to have a better experience for sleep. Okay, that's it. That's not some big deal. And really start connecting. 
finding a support group of connection, find people that support you, and then integrate mental health, the understanding that caregiving can only happen if your mental health is feeling good. So all of this yields this. It's a long-winded way of getting to this, but if this raises your self-esteem, lowers your guilt, if this stops you from going into burnout and compassion fatigue, if this gives you the skills along the way to really grow, then all we're asking for you in 2023 is to take charge of your stress reduction. These are all emotional regulating techniques. I'm going to do the breath work for you. If you want to just have a five minute of exercise, you schedule it in. You can do self-hypnosis. YouTube's got a score of guided images and, and things, people that do self-hypnosis calms your system, yoga, biofeedback. But again, social regulation, being around people. I know we isolate so much as caregivers. We've got to find it in our way that is the greatest stress reducer in the world. So this is why I put this in because I use it for our employees, but I want you to learn from this. Uh, they have an EAP to go to. Maybe you do if you're still working, but these are all the windows of opportunities for 2023 to further this plan. If you go to psychology today, I want you to put your zip code in the front page. It says search for a therapist. I write for that magazine. It's the best search engine you'll ever find. They'll pop up all around you within five miles. Codependency Anonymous is great, but I don't have, but the next thing, the basis of what codependency is, remember fight, flight, freeze, fawn is complex PTSD. So I'd like you to go to the CPTSD Foundation. They have a very inexpensive, affordable approach for caregivers. They're dealing right now with people supportive of people dealing with trauma. It's a really unique program. If you have a support group in your area, please look it up. I mean, hospitals have are the centers of healthcare and they usually have one. And use the breath work I'm going to teach you now. Okay. I want you to strive to be here now. I want you to strive to be in the present. Anxiety of tomorrow or the fears from yesterday just pull you away from where your energy is, which is the self-awareness of the moment. So self-awareness and this breath work I'm going to show you will reduce anxiety, reduce stress, and reduce your anger. It'll shift the chemistry of your body, unlike any other species. Many of you know, I've said it often, my first work 28, 9, 29 years ago was with policemen, firemen, emergency medical technicians. And I had sergeants at 8 in the morning breathing, doing breath work with these cops. I was marveled. Before a cop goes into a SWAT situation, I don't know if you watch these terrible tragedies on TV lately, but they're doing breath work because they got to be proactive and not reactive. I'm going to ask you as a caregiver, you two are running into burning homes. I need you to be proactive, not reactive. Okay. I need you to take a negative experience and turn to a positive if you're feeling dysregulated. If you're feeling disengaged, I need you to pull yourself in, engage yourself. This is how our neurosystem works. And I'm going to give you a quick exercise here, and then I'm going to open up for questions and answers. And I'm going to tell you I love you. And I said, I want you to love yourself for 2023 and take it slowly. So here's how breath work works. It works on our vagus nerve, which goes from our cortex of our brain to our healing organs. Okay, passes our lungs and our heart and goes to our gut. And we can reset it in the middle of caregiving for a loved one that's torturing us or a system or we're running fast. It takes you less than 80 seconds. Okay, it can transform your body's chemistry totally can, and brings control back to you because we're most controlling when we're out of control. But you can't read about this. You really can't. And if you do read, there's a great book I want you to grab. It's called The Myth of Normal. I'm very privileged to be on the Polyvagal Institute with Dr. Gabor Mate. He's the author. The Myth of Normal. If you have to read a book, he will send you to these grounding techniques, but you'll understand why. Because as caregivers, we forget our healthy attachments, our authenticities. So 2023, hey, I hate to say it, Nike had it right. Just do it. Do it. What does this mean? Do it. It means reduce your stress. It means look at mental health different. It means unlock the power of your vagus nerve. We have proof positive through MRIs. You can be your own trauma therapist in 2023. That's the resolution I'm asking you to keep. Now, many of you know, I'm a hypnotherapist. I don't really want to commandeer your breath if you don't want to do breath work. It's all so cool. You always have a choice. But breath work is a one grounding technique. Others are prayer that can rewire the brain. I want you to use these, not instead of, but keep putting it into your plan for 2023. Gratitude journaling, 
uh, singing, dancing, you know, doing things that go to a safe place you once were, touch it, feel it, smell it. All these are grounding techniques. It takes less than 80 seconds. I'm not asking you to sit on some mountain in Tibet for an hour a day. I'm asking you to ground your chemical system. So let's do it together. Here's how you do it. Many of you are already black belts if you've attended my talks. Um, and you can do this on YouTube afterwards. You can go and put the 478 in, put Dr. Weil's name in. He's a sweetheart. I worked with him 25 years ago in the treatment world. He's great. He brought this to us and found tremendous outcomes. Okay. It was meant for sleep. So at nighttime, you can use it. If you use it in the moment, it'll calm you. It does shift your chemistry. But if you schedule this in your 2023 mental health plan, four to six times a day, you'll start reworking and rewiring and becoming more proactive. It's only 80 seconds, right? Just tell the love when you're taking care of it, you're taking 80 seconds. You can teach them this and tell them to take 80 seconds and then come together. But here's how you do it if you're new. I'll ask you to breathe in through your nostrils for four seconds. It's cool, it's refreshing. I want you to keep it in your mind for up to seven seconds. You can picture butterflies or unicorns, any guided image, or just stay silent, okay? But when you exhale, that's the secret sauce. Triggers your vagus nerve response. Exhale like this. So your dogs and your cats can hear it, or your partners, because that's what will do it. We're only gonna do it four times. You're gonna, afterwards, you know, you have to listen to my voice now, so don't get too confused with the, the counting, because you can do it with your own later. But let's all do it together, if you'd like. Those who don't wanna do it, you have an alternative, but let's all close our eyes. Let's just take an experiential sort of exercise that will usher 2023 in, and will give us a tool. So with your eyes closed, your feet on the ground. If you have shoes on, feel the floor through your shoes. If you're barefooted, feel the floor through your feet, okay? With your back upright with respect, let's just take less than 80 seconds now to reset your system, okay? Let's now breathe in through our nostrils for four seconds. Keep it, swish it around for up to seven seconds. <sighs> Blow out the anxiety heart for eight. Breathe in the calmness again for four seconds. Keep it, swish it around for up to seven seconds. Blow out with passion for eight. Breathe in the calmness again for four. Keep it, swish it around for up to seven seconds. <laughs> Wild with gusto for eight. Last time. Breathe in the calmness for four seconds. Keep it. Swish it around for up to seven seconds. What all the anxiety you're feeling as a caregiver for eight. With your eyes still closed, please, feet on the ground. Go inside your body and scan it. Go up your, from your, your stomach, your gut. Go up to your heart, your lungs. Go up and feel a shift in your body. Literally, the chemistry has shifted. Human beings are the only group and species that can reset ourselves when we're out of control in this manner. You've not only shifted the chemistry of your body, but you produced oxytocin, which is a hormone that connects to your neurotransmitters. We call the happy hormone in psychology. You've done all that simply by 80 seconds of breath work, okay? When you're ready, open your eyes and come back. Come back here to our meeting and understand that this is 2023, your act of self-compassion. Uh, this breath work and other grounding techniques are what you need to integrate into your routine. A moment of self-compassion changes your day and a string of moments like this will change the course of your life. If you're interested in more, you can go to Dr. David Germer's work and Dr. Kristen Neff at the University of Austin in Texas, the Mindful Self-Compassion Institute. It's great, it, but you can be your own therapist as well. So happy new year to you. Here's some caregiving you know, support and resolutions you can live with. Be the change you wanna see in all others around you and take your oxygen first and know that better things are coming in 2023. They really are. So keep calm. Keep calm and just breathe. Thank you, Glenda. That. Oh, thank you. Um, did you cover everything that you wanted to on the foundation? 
Uh, yes, actually, I'll okay. do. I love. I can't wait to do another high conflict uh, caregiving education for people who are dealing in high conflict, and I'll bring in the foundation at that time. But right now, the Well Med Caregiver, the Well Med Charitable Foundation, they'll know how to get in touch with me if that's in your life now. But we'll do it formally later. Thank you, Glenda. Okay, um, we did have a question from Margaret, and I she wanted to know the name of the book, the first one that you mentioned. And I write down notes as we go along, but I must not have caught that one. And I'm not sure which one she's thinking about. Well, I love the fact that you asked about complex PTSD and the foundation of TAR Network. So I'd like to answer that for you. It was called, I believe, I just said, um, The Body Keeps the Score, written by a phenomenal trauma therapist named Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. He's from Holland. He works out of Boston University in Boston now. And The Body Keeps the Score is phenomenal. Because it just means as caregivers, we fool ourselves. And I do as a hero child, but your body is always keeping it. So I want you more in touch with your body, your complex trauma, which is your adverse childhood experiences, and what's being triggered in you. So get that. Dr. Van der Kolk, I, I'm privileged to sit on the, he's on the Polyvagal Institute as well, but it's a great book. It'll introduce you to what's really behind the codependency of us as caregivers. So th- thank you for asking. And um, what I will say to you is I will send you a, a link on some of these books and our follow-up email if you registered for the session today. In a couple of days, you'll receive a follow-up email um, uh, giving you resources there and things that Dr. Jamie has talked about, but also asking for your feedback because we need that as well. If you have a topic you'd like to see Dr. Jamie or any of our presenters uh, cover for you, let us know about that. Uh, I see Dr. Jamie put the name uh, in there. Uh, and there's a charity that, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's a misspelling, y'all. Uh, but um, we're, I'm blessed to be able to work with the future brain science people. And really, the Tatar Network is one we're dealing with high conflict relationships. Sometimes you ha- are dealing with that too. But really, the books from Dr. Gabor Mate, the, uh, which really will open that your hearts to what we're talking about, is the underpinning of caregiver burnout. It really is. And uh, I wrote that down wrong again. I, boy, I'm so ADD. It's crazy, guys. <laughs> uh, that's great, though. I love try it. it. I tell my daughter. It one, try it one um, more time. And while you're doing that, I'll ask if anybody has a question, a comment, uh, want to talk about your resolutions as a caregiver for the year. Um, you can press star six if you have phoned in. You can just unmute your microphone um, if you zoomed in. TARnetwork.org. Yeah. And TAR is a, uh, an acronym for Toxic Abusive Relationships. So um, it doesn't matter what the diagnosis is, but many of us in caregiving are dealing with very difficult people with not a lot of empathy and accountability, not real self-aware, and it's triggering a whole lot in us. So we created a network of toxic abuse relationships, and um, we're, it's wonderful. It's a nonprofit. But nevertheless, I really would rather you guys go to cptsdfoundation.org, where you'll find monthly sort of connections and some great help to understand. See, codependency is like the byproduct, but the root cause is our childhood issues. I always say it takes 10 years to become who we are and next 70 to 80 to get out of it. Right. Uh, One final question that I have for you, Dr. Jamie, where does someone uh, locate a therapist that can work with them? Um, I I love that. Yeah. Let me revisit that because I agree with you. I'm so glad you asked that question. So listen, as a therapist for years, not all therapists will do for a caregiver, really. And not all therapists are trauma informed. So it's easy than you think. I'd like you to go to psychologytoday.com. Now you can I can write that for you if you'd like. Psychologytoday.com. I, I'm very again privileged to work with them. Uh, I have articles there, but that's not why I'm sending you. They have the best search engine I have ever seen in probably the world of psychology and therapy. On your front page, it'll say search for the therapist. Put your zip code in wherever you're at, from Alaska to Florida. Out will pop up 10 to 15 therapists who are licensed and already vetted. Now there's filters. Hear me out loud and clear. You need a trauma-informed therapist or a DBT, dialectical behavioral therapist. That is in sync with what I'm talking to you about. Dialectical behavioral therapy allows us to retrain our brain. And so, listen, you can sort with anything. You can look for somebody with your insurance. You can look with what you're doing. But whatever you do, please make sure it's a trauma-informed therapist because 
just going back to emotional flashbacks is not really helpful for us as caregivers. We need to develop tools. So the, that's the, the new tools that will help us is DBT. Perfect, perfect. Uh, I know that people have those questions and they may hang up and say, oh, I forgot to ask, you know, where can I find a therapist? So, oh, it's DB. See there, I had DD. <laughs> mm, DB. Okay. You've all heard of CBT. You've heard of cognitive behavioral therapy yes. and that's great. That's a reframing what you can do and they're very helpful, but nothing is more helpful to retraining the brain from CPTSD than DBT. And it began in the eighties. And that's what I'd like you to do. Cause you know what? We usually only get one shot in psychology to make a, a first impression. And I rather you clinically connect. Caregiving really gets triggered a lot from our, our childhood. So thank there you, you go. Thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us today. And I want to thank Dr. Jamie for um, kind of focusing us this year on our New Year's resolutions. That, that's really helpful information. Uh, Dr. Jamie is with us frequently, so watch for his sessions on the calendar. I do want to take just a second to tell you our last session in January, which I cannot believe, is January the 31st at 11 o'clock Central Time, and we're going to have one of our another another of our frequent presenters, uh, Dr. Barry Jacobs. If you haven't heard him him before. Uh, I would encourage you to tune in. He's going to be talking about embracing tender memories in caregiving. And sometimes, you know, we get so busy as a caregiver, we don't embrace those memories. And so I would encourage you to join us on the 31st at 11 o'clock. So thank you very much for joining us today. Um, as Dr. Jamie has up on his slide, take your oxygen first. It's key to everything you do as a caregiver. So come back and join us again next time. Bye-bye, Dr. Jamie, and bye, everyone. See you soon. Be kind to yourselves. Happy New Year, you all. Bye-bye.